What do we want? Data. And where do we want it? In buckets. In this episode of Cloud Storage Bytes, we take a look at buckets and why they are the cornerstone of everything you do. Stay tuned for more. Before you can do anything in cloud storage, you've got to create a bucket because anything you want to store in cloud storage needs a bucket in order for you to do anything with it. When configuring your bucket, you need to make three initial decisions, name, location, and storage class. First, a bucket needs a globally unique name and this can't be changed. So choose a name that will be relevant and useful to you. We've got great documentation on naming, so we'll go ahead and link that in the description. Once you've named your bucket, you need to select a location. You should choose location based upon what type of redundancy options you need, where your primary users are, and what your expected first time to byte is when caching is turned off. Generally, you should store your data in a location that's convenient or contains the majority of the users of your data. There are three different types of locations, region, dual region, and multi-region. This gives you plenty of flexibility in choosing the location that will work best for you, since location can't be changed once that bucket is created. Use a region to help optimize latency and network bandwidth for data consumers, such as analytics pipelines that are grouped in the same region. Use a dual region when you want similar performance advantages as regions, but you also want the higher availability that comes with being geo-redundant and use a multi-region when you want to serve content to data consumers that are outside of the Google network and distributed across large geographic areas, or when you want the higher availability that comes with geo-redundancy. And finally, you choose a storage class, which you can update later on, but if you don't select anything initially, this will default to standard. Let's dive in and see what that actually means. Cloud storage has four different storage classes, all offer low latency and high durability, but they vary based on their availability and minimum storage durations, along with the pricing for storage and access. Data that will be served at a high rate with high availability should use the standard storage class. This class provides the best availability with the trade-off of a slightly higher price. Data that will be infrequently accessed and can tolerate a slightly lower availability should be stored using the nearline storage, cold line storage, or archive storage classes. Your choices here are going to vary depending on your specific needs. I like to think about using nearline for something I'll access once a month or so, and archive for something I'll need about once a year, and cold line for the stuff in between. The documentation will help you make the best choice here. Now that you know what goes into cloud storage and where it goes, we'll get to the good stuff, like how to get it there and what to do with it. Until then, subscribe, give us a like, and let us know what features of cloud storage you'd like to learn more about. Thanks for joining us for this quick bite of cloud storage. <laughs>